What's going on guys? Christian Anto here with Team Elite FTS and Ileana Power Asylum. So I wanted to talk to you guys about some personal experiences here at Ileana Power Asylum on the powerlifting team that we have here and a bunch of articles that have been written on Elite FTS um, concerning self-regulation. So self-regulation can be a rabbit hole topic, how to do it, when to do it, and all of the variables that go into implementing self-regulation. And you can do it by a ton of different ways. And Dave Tate wrote an amazing article a couple of years back that I will find and link in this blog, article, post, whatever you want to call it, about how to self-regulate yourself. A lot of individuals on the powerlifting team here at Ileana Power Asylum have very labor-intensive jobs and it does not stop or shouldn't stop you from lifting, you just have to be smart about it. There are plenty of people that have labor intensive jobs that are world record holders and elite level power lifters. Um, there are several on Team Elite FTS and if you follow their blogs, you will know who I'm talking about. A lot of the people on the Ileana Power Asylum team are starting to feel the effects of what labor intensive jobs do to training. Now, labor intensive can mean a vast majority of things. The one that comes to mind is physical labor. So we have roofers on the team. We have steel mill people on the team, wood mill people on the team that are on their feet working, doing taxing things all day long, physically taxing. And then they come in here and that takes a toll on them from a lifting standpoint. So percentage-based training can be a mental mind screw for them because they see a percentage and they say, this is the percent that I should hit today. Well, guess what? Your 100% that you did at the meet isn't always gonna be there on this particular day, especially if you just worked a 12 hour shift of labor intensive work and then try and come in here and move a sub maximal amount of weight on the higher end. Mental intensive jobs can also take a toll. We have um, programmers, literally people that write code for a computer that sit in front of a screen all day that their brain is constantly going and that mental capacity can take a massive toll on you if you are writing code, writing code, um, deciphering other people's codes and trying to fix a ton of different programming. And then you come in here and try and take a max effort lift, um, getting ready for a meet, that's not gonna have the effect that you, or the outcome that you want it to. So, Self-regulation is going to be mental and it's gonna be physical that you have to implement in your training. This is where having training partners and or a coach that has been around this for a while is gonna come into play to one, give you perspective of if you think you had a really terrible day, might not be all that terrible, especially with the outside variables that you have going on. Learning and knowing when to implement rest and recovery in the right way, whether that come by way of sleep or just skipping a training session and putting it back a day and then manipulating the rest of the week to best maximize your training, all goes into programming, all goes into talking to other individuals that have been in this sport for a while and understand, hey, I can just shift this 24 hours later and soak up that recovery or that rest period now and then have my training really, really be efficient. That is a form of self-regulation. You don't try and jam pack everything into that one day, you manipulate the rest of your week and then you can carry on with your training. I'm gonna start bringing up more tips and topics like this that I am seeing because I there's a wide variety of individuals on the IPA powerlifting team and just share a few things that I see and ways to manipulate it that could be helpful to you guys. 
For any questions or any more information that you guys need, check out my blog posts on Elite FTS's website, or you can email me at 19cinto85 at gmail.com.